Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite you to stand for the invocation that will be given by Pastor Kyle Phillips from Grace Fellowship and remain standing for the flag salute. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's hearts and heads together. Lord, in this uh, season of Thanksgiving, it is, it is wonderful to pause and to, Lord, to realize that you are uh, present. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for and as we look towards the season of, of joy. Lord, we just ask that you would uh, be fully present here. Lord, guide these deliberations. Lord, we ask that uh, right, just, just be just a rich uh, spirit of, of community and, and unity uh, tonight. That uh, as issues are raised and discussed, that uh, Lord, your will, will will be revealed, Lord, and uh, you'll be glorified. Lord, we just thank you for this time in, this pres in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mr. Hickey, will you lead us in the flag salute? Ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we continue, I would like to um, read the announcement that's at the top of your agenda. We kindly request all audience members in council chambers to be seated throughout the meeting and thus speaking at the podium. We also request that citizens in attendance remain in the audience seating area and refrain from approaching council members and staff at the dais. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Does anyone in the audience wish to have something removed from the consent agenda? Council? Motion to approve consent oh. as presented. Can I have a second? I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was 5 0 vote. Audience oral and written communications. The City Council welcomes public comments on any items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Council. We respectfully request that this public forum be utilized in a positive and constructive manner. Persons addressing the Council should first state their name and area of residence, the matter of city business to be discussed, and the organization or persons represented, if any. Comments directed um, to an item on the agenda can be made at the time that agenda item comes before the council. All right. Um, and before we get into our regular time of public comments, I'd like to introduce uh, Matt Constantine, who's um, the head of the Crew County Public Health Department, and he's going to talk to us about Health Matters. It's a new program that they're launching. Excuse me, sir. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I want to introduce those that have accompanied me today. They're giving me a hard time in the back. And actually ask if they would come up. Thank you. So, uh, Brent Kerrigan is the Assistant Director of Public Health. First up, Michelle, of course, is going to follow. Uh, she's our Public Information Officer, plays an important role in what we do. Lisa Amarias is uh, our special, uh, works on special projects for us. And then Carly Dawson works with us uh, in, in our administration. And Jessica Smith is our new um, fitness expert that we brought on. So first off, thank you for allowing us to be here. <laughs> we're, um, we're grateful to come up and actually see the snow and see some weather. And there were seagulls flying around our office when we left this morning, but there's snow up here now. So. Um, but we're here and proud to be here to announce the formal kickoff of a new program uh, called uh, Know Your Numbers. And it is um, designed to specifically draw attention uh, to how we can improve our health and how we can improve the health of Kern County residents and specifically to focus on some key health 
health indicators. Unfortunately, there's some, um, the premise of why we're here is because we suffer disproportionately from some health issues in Kern County and all of our cities. Heart disease plays a major role in deaths um, in Kern County. And in fact, we rank very poorly as we compare ourselves to other counties and other cities in the state. Uh, we had almost 2,700 uh, emergency department visits from heart disease, and we have about 980 deaths uh, related to heart disease. We rank 56 out of 58 as far as counties uh, in comparison to how heart disease affects your life. So we rank very poorly. We want to be on the other end of that. Diabetes, uh, the current ranks the worst in the state. For diabetes, it's a cause of death. Uh, we have more than 2,000 emergency department visits, almost 1,000 hospitalizations, uh, 250 deaths each year, and then finally obesity. Um, unfortunately, again, we rank very poorly, 57 out of 58 for our obesity rates. A third of our children are overweight or obese, and almost three quarters, believe it or not, of Kern County residents are overweight or obese, 73.6%. So we're here today because we need to change that dynamic. We need to start addressing chronic disease. This is hard. It's not something that's going to be solved tomorrow. But we need to figure out something to do differently. We have to change the dynamic. Uh, so we're going to really commit to doing better. So launching this January, we are going on the road with a program called Know Your Numbers. Uh, Tehachapi is one of the first of five communities we are launching with. Um, these are six um, six week long programs, so they're, they're free six week programs that we're going to launch in different communities. Uh, as we just mentioned, Jessica is on board as our physical fitness expert. We have a nutritionist now on board. And this program kicks off with a free health screening conducted by our public health nurses where we actually read your numbers. Uh, we take some of those key indicators, BMI, blood pressure, cholesterol, blood glucose, and we actually write them down for you on a passport. We call it Passport to Health. Um, there's also an app, of course, there's an app for everything, but there's an app specifically designed for this program that allows Jessica and our nutritionists to actually interact with the individuals participating and they can sign it for free. So the initial uh, program uh, kicks off January 14th at 5.30 is the initial screening into Ashby. And fitness and nutrition classes are every Tuesday for six weeks from 5.30 to 7. And then the final screening is February 25th. And uh, we're doing all this at Jake's, Jacobson Middle School. Um, we have a number of other areas we're gonna hit, but we wanted to start here. Um, we're hopeful that we can use you as a model of success and show how we can make improvements. Uh, your mayor is committed to come to every class. <laughs> thank you, thank you, mayor. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we could use your help on promoting it. We're going to market heavily um, this resource as a free um, um, resource for the community to come to. And we will adapt it as we learn more. We've tried a little bit on some smaller uh, pilot programs, and this has shown some real success. So uh, we're here because it's important, and we're here because we want to help and help make a difference. So. Uh, Mayor, that just concludes my presentation. And happy to answer any questions. I'm getting a little nervous that I'm standing behind you. I, 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 I can understand. I'm watching. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody. Yes. Could you give those dates again, please? Oh, yes, sir. Um, so we kick off um, uh, January 14th at 5:30, and that's the initial screening where we will have um, our nurses that will be there taking. Um, to taking your numbers. And then Jessica, I believe you will be there also on that day. And does the program actually start that day too? Um, we'll be answering questions with the, the actual fitness and nutrition classes start the following Tuesday. So 5.30 to 7, Jacobson Middle School. Okay. Anybody else on the council have any questions? Matt, would you like us to uh, play this video you know? There's a video we brought. <laughs> Thank you. I completely forgot. Please. <laughs> Did you know Kern County has over 1,200 deaths per year related to diabetes and heart disease? Did you know almost 75% of Kern County adults are either overweight or obese? This is a growing epidemic. In response, Public Health has launched a Know Your Numbers campaign because we care about you, Kern County. The six-week program will offer free health screenings and fitness and nutrition classes. 
boxes. All you have to do is show up. We've given Ashley some brochures. I think she sequestered them until she approves them, but she has, oh, they've been handed out a little bit. Okay, thank you. I guess she approved them, so that gives a little bit more information. Do you have any extra because we can put them out at City Hall? We put them in the back right now for any public uh, to grab okay, them. We'll take the leftovers over to Thank you. And if there's any groups we can talk to or talk more in detail about it or further promote it, we be, we'll be there in an instant. So you let us know where we should be and we'll help promote it. Okay. Um, thank you. Questions? And I think I believe I heard it on the video. We don't need an appointment or any of that. Just come on the 14th and they'll <laughs> take our blood. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Just come and they will take your blood. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and then on uh, when we start with fitness class, are they going to gear them towards um, the senior? I noticed you were touching the floor. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so we've created a program that is um, easily transitioned to all ages and fitness levels. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Jessica has been demoing this at work, so she adapts to all of our limitations, and you know she's very good, and very enthusiastic about the program, and helps us to do what challenge ourselves. Yes, it is. It is great. I um, Just, I noticed you aren't in the video, but no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I will be sure to record you. When you're I will be there. I I was when I first heard this, I was gonna say, man, but you are waiting till January, so yes. we can pig out for Christmas <laughs> and then come see you in January. So and the only question I have is, why is Kern County so bad? Yeah, those, those are good questions, and we've struggled at trying to understand why, so we can help try to solve the problem. Um, our general poverty levels are high in Kern. Transportation is a concern. Our large geographic county, the third largest, makes it difficult to access resources. Sometimes a language barriers present an issue in other parts of the county. Um, a lot of it I can't, I can't define. But that is something we constantly look at. We actually evaluate data to see where are those diseases coming from to try to find some common factors so that we can address our, our resources appropriately. But we believe this is a start, and it, it heightens the awareness of the concerns that we have in the county. Thank you. Thank you. We will um, probably contact you in the next few days with some ideas of other to hatch the organization. So. We'll be there. Thank you. Any of the rest of you want to make any comments? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, with the council's blessing, we'll have uh, Key Budge work with Mr. Constantine's group, and we can continue to push this out on our social media and all the different avenues that we have at the city. Okay. Thank you. Thank very you. Thank you very much. We'll come up there. Okay, we'll continue with public comments. Are there any public comments this evening? All right. If not, we will move on to um, item number six. Uh, Madam Mayor, I need to recuse myself for item six and eight. Uh, item six is I'm a contractor for the Parks and Rec. Okay. So I don't want to conflict. And then uh, number eight is uh, I'm an employee of RSI Petroleum. So I recuse myself for those two items. All right. Thank you. Chair. <coughs> Honorable Mayor and Council Members, uh, the Tashby City Council will need to appoint one member to the Tashby Valley Recreation and Parks District Board to fill the vacancy created by Board Member Lassen's re resignation. The appointment will fill the, fulfill the remainder of her four-year term, which expires on February 2nd, 2023. We received one application from Sandy Chavez. Her application is included. Sandy Chavez is also in the audience. Uh, if Sandy would like to come up and say a few words, or if you have any questions, yes. Good Do you have questions? <laughs> why don't you, uh, why? in 30 seconds or less, tell us why we should appoint you. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I work for the 
Parks and Recreation for seven years, yeah. and as a uh, coordinator, and um, I think I did just about every position other than the district manager. <laughs> but in that time, I was able to serve under five district managers, which is quite a few <laughs> while I was there. I also learned a lot. I learned what it is um, that makes the parks and Rec strong, and how important it is to have the right members supporting your leadership there, and how important it is to have your uh, your district manager, your people in place. And um, I told myself when I left the Parks and Rec that one day I would love to serve as a council, I mean, as a um, board member. And um, because I believe in the leadership that we have now, in the board uh, that is there to serve, and I would just love to be a part of that. I think that I, I don't know what I can bring, other than maybe the seven years of experience, but I sure believe in what they're doing there, and I just want to be a part of that. Thank you. Yes. Are there any questions from council members? Uh, well, I think your qualifications are, are right there for us, and if uh, there's no other questions, I would like to recommend that we appoint. <laughs> All right. Um, we need a motion for that. Motion, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's my motion. All right. <laughs> Do I have a second? A second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was a 5 0 vote. Four zero. Oh, four. I'm so sorry. 4 0 vote. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, um, finance report disbursements and bills for RSI. No report, it's just the. All okay. right. All right, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve disbursements for November 12th through November 21st, 2019. Authorize the payment. So moved. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Not the record Madam show. Mayor, I'm I will, sorry. I will abstain from the vote. Okay. Um, let the record show it was three <coughs> yeas and one abstention. And and um, from Mr. Hedke and uh, Mr. Davies being uh, refused. All right. Thank you. All right, well, Mr. Davies is coming back in. Development Services Director Report. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, the item I have for you tonight is standard fare for us. We've completed the Cherry Lane Southside Sidewalk Project, and so tonight I'm asking you to approve the notice of completion for that project and direct the staff to record that notice. Um, I've also included in your packet on the third page um, a cost summary closeout, and while I, I always caution you guys that projects don't always work out under budget, uh, this one did, and um, we estimated before we entered construction uh, that we would have to come out of pocket a little over $8,000. We ended up delivering the project under budget uh, to the tune of almost $27,000. So credit to the team for managing to continue those change orders and, and to execute the project in a timely manner. So with that said, uh, you have my recommendation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the audience concerning this? <coughs> Council? <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve the notice of completion for the Cherry Lane Southside Sidewalk Project. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was a 5 0 vote. City Attorney? Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, this is on the open meeting agenda to uh, make it uh, announce that uh, Council Member Hecke, who was selling all his hangers at the airport, uh, and we thought might have a conflict of interest, does have a conflict of interest. 
Uh, the opinion of the Federal Political Practices Commission is in your packet, but they determined that the bill can go through uh, and the city can participate should it wish to do so under what's called the rule of necessity, where uh, the city council is required to act on something and they're the only body that can act on that particular issue. And so uh, you can adjourn in a closed session when the time comes and take up that, that matter. Uh, council member, he has to recuse himself and leave the room. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple thank yous uh, to the city's public works crew, the County of Kern Roads Department, and Caltrans for keeping our highways and byways clear over the last several days. We've received uh, quite a bit of snow over the last three to five days in different areas, and. Uh, we had uh, safe streets and roads. So thank you to all involved. And then also thank you to uh, the Main Street organization and all the volunteers that helped put on the line block this Saturday, this past Saturday night in downtown. It was snowing, but there were a lot of people out there and it was quite fun actually. And uh, no one to my knowledge slipped and fell and it was all good. We had uh, Bob and his crew out there shoveling sidewalks. We had the, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints Actually, we're, sorry, we're kind of plowing sidewalks specifically for the line walk, but they were just doing it as a kind gesture, and we're seeing more and more of that in our city with Love to Hatchby and others. So just thank you to all the people, all the volunteers that helped pull, pull off a great week, and hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Davies, council member comments? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Smith? Uh, just a couple items. Um, uh, Caltrans District 9, uh, Director Brent Green, and Public Information Officer Christine Nadler invited me to meet with them this afternoon uh, here at City Hall. And uh, uh, we talked about uh, certain things around town that was just it wasn't a formal agenda. It was uh, you know, just their public outreach. They were in Ridgecrest and then Cal City, just meeting with city officials uh, uh, in an impromptu meetings. They're meeting tomorrow with uh, uh, Vince Fong and then uh, in, in Bakersfield. So I was happy to be here. I asked Jay and, and, and Key and Greg to, to join me after I met with them for a little while. And we just discussed the communications between the city, our police department, City CHP and Caltrans during weather issues and then with the power outages. We had an issue, I guess, in front of Albertsons one day, not even related to power, I don't think, just the signal stopped working. So it's in the Caltrans right away, so we can't just go out there and put a stop sign and then the power comes back on or starts working, then you've got issues with people not knowing what to do. Is it the signal or is it the stop sign or what? So uh, just uh, like there's a public outreach for folks that seems pretty common sense. <laughs> no power or it's not blinking red, you still stop and treat it as a stop sign. You, if, some people are just not sure what to do. I guess some people got tired of waiting and they just went ahead and, and used it as a, as a stop sign. So it's just common sense to, to treat it that way. Um, in, our, in our discussions, we're just wanting to make sure that uh, our dispatch has the numbers for the Caltrans call out for those technical issues, not, not roadway issues. So that we always will be able to coordinate with them and the CHP. Um, the, we discussed the Sand Canyon bottleneck, which has been backing up for miles and miles and miles now with that heavy holiday traffic. And it was funny that uh, Christine Nadler, who's their public information officer, was traveling, I think, the day of Thanksgiving or the day after she was going south and had come down 14 into Mojave and looked out to the right and noticed the backup all the way down in toward Mojave. She got pictures for, for their for their videos that they put out. So they're very well aware of that, that bottleneck is because you had so much traffic coming down in one lane each direction right out here at Sand Canyon. Uh, then uh, we discussed uh, incident reporting, uh, highway incidents, for example, we discussed some 
For example, at the Keen, there's numerous uh, issues at that curve right there where trucks turn over and block the freeway. But sometimes that gets reported at the CHP level, but not at the Caltrans level as far as the total reporting of incidents that have blocked a freeway and, and had a significant backup for so many for a certain period of time. So we're wanting to make that they make sure that those incidents get properly recorded at the state level because that's where a lot of our funding comes from for for our needs in this area and if, the, if you have a meeting with people at, in headquarters of caltrans we said we have all these incidents or this is a dangerous spot road and they draw up their their charts and then well it's not that bad it's only a it's three or four times a month or something like that when everyone knows it's pretty regular <clears throat> so we discussed the reporting issues we uh, and then my favorite that I always bring up, and, and this was a casual uh, meeting of the uh, climbing lanes on 58. Uh, I never miss an opportunity to bring that up. There will be a presentation by Caltrans at the next KernCog meeting in January. It's the third Thursday of the month, so uh, they're gonna present uh, the preliminary studies on that. And they'll have engineering folks there and then an overview of, but there will be technical information provided there, cost analysis, those kind of things. They're also providing some drone, drone flyovers uh, of the taking videos of the traffic backups and that. And Jay, I think you mentioned you've been doing on your own. Many people do when they come up and there's 25 cars ahead of you and there's two trucks vying for who's going to get ahead when. And it is a significant backup. On, the, on those certain days and like every day um, but they're gonna be doing that presentation in January so um, my other topic is waste management so my neighbors are hounding me why our trash hasn't been picked up since the day of Thursday which you expect the next day is Friday well the snow and everything well they Saturday's come and now uh, Monday's come and gone so um, I talked to someone here at City Hall and they said they talked to them and uh, well they've had so much problem in the Antelope Valley with the snow over there that they didn't have the backup resources to send our way yes. and my comment would be we're as much important as they are we have a contract they need to provide the resources or extra days or extra hours and get the garbage picked up we're gonna be almost a week now without that pick up or a refund or a refund yeah. so anyway if you can relay that to uh, waste management for citizens here um, I don't, it doesn't look like i'm the only one in my neighborhood i see there's several alleys i just drive all around and they're not picked up yet thank you do you mind if i ask briefly i just wanted to let everybody know i did call and receive a refund so call waste management tell them you want a refund for missing your trash service for a week and i got one so well, yeah, that's not necessary call city hall yeah. because we already have a standing rule if you don't receive trash service you don't pay for that day it's been you know i put that policy in some time ago corey has been working with waste management you are absolutely right we're not happy about this the excuse is just that it's an excuse we're working with waste management to uh, not allow this to happen again. Uh, when you have a contract, you expect the service that the contract spells out. Right. Uh, anybody that did not receive trash pickup this week or the following week, you know, weeks and weeks ago, because of other issues, we have a standing policy that that resident is not charged for that service. Uh, waste management not happy about that necessarily, but that's something that we've been doing. So first and foremost, we don't want to issue refunds. We want people to get trash picked up, right? It's important uh, and it's very important to us. So I don't know, Corey, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I so, was talking waste management. Yeah, I was on the phone with waste management today because they had emailed last week about not only did they have a 
holiday, but then the weather. This has been an area wide because there was snow in the Animal Valley, and as you mentioned. So normally they would just scramble more trucks, so they don't have more trucks right now because they're trying to catch up everywhere. So what they decided to do, and then albeit a, a lot uh, later than they probably should have come out with, um, the plan is right now, they're moving forward to service half of the Thursday trash routes tomorrow, and remaining trash routes on the following day, Wednesday. Also, all the trash and recycling routes, uh, both schedule one and schedule two, depending on what you're on, uh, as well as any extra bags placed for service by Thursday uh, will be picked up this Thursday. So if you have extra that's not fitting in the can, bag it up, set it on the curb next to your, your, your cans, and then we'll get out of the truck and physically pick that up as well. So um, that's kind of the reason. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Hopefully bag it up or, or keep it uh, so that you know your day is coming um, and then put it out there. But uh, bag it up, tie it up, and they will uh, pick that up. So. Not the perfect solution, but they, they figured out something here this afternoon. So, thank you. And their uh, recycling has been intermittent. We'll go. Sometimes they pick it up, and sometimes they don't. So please elevate that to the powers to be at waste management that they need to stick to their schedules and. And yeah, absolutely. Every time you, if, if, if someone has a pickup miss for, for trash, recycling, uh, call City Hall, let us know because we then we have an incident log essentially that goes straight to waste management and a lot of folks from their regional to their local office. And then as Ray pointed out, we credit the bills back as well for that miss pickup because you're not going to pay for something. And normally they've been pretty good at scrambling somebody to come out and pick it up. Sometimes, like this week, obviously not with the, with the weather. So, um, but yes, continue to let us know because we don't know unless you tell us that they miss. Um, and so it's easier to call City Hall and we'll go that route than necessarily calling waste management directly. That was my other question. So a citizen doesn't have to stay on hold with waste management. They can just call, call City Hall and we'll take care of it for them. One stop shopping. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Will the public be informed? Pardon? Will the public be informed of this? Yeah, the, as far as the plan for tomorrow and the rest of the week, yes, we'll put that together and get that out tomorrow. Thank you. Um, this is Paul Gunkorn. Yes. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the city for the lovely Christmas decorations. And also on Saturday, we will be having our parade and lighting of the Christmas tree. And that is put on by the chamber. And it should be a fun event. Hopefully it won't snow. And um, again, thanks to Main Street for a successful wine walk. And that's about all I have. Thank you. Mr. Hanke. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I've received a couple of calls uh, today, actually two today and one yesterday. Uh, you guys probably have seen this on social media. Uh, it was the concern and the complaints about the signs that went up over our legacy for land of four seasons sign coming up the hill and in the town. And I'm just wondering if somebody could explain uh, to the folks who are concerned about us losing a little piece of our heritage by putting the new uh, signage up over those old billboards if we could just hope, basically have an explanation so the public understands our involvement uh, or our lack of involvement in that process and uh, you know a little bit of an explanation on that I'll take this one as well so I think you hit it down the head when you said old billboards um, that was an issue those were controlled by the greater tax chamber of commerce it had been in disrepair for quite some time. Um, the chamber didn't have any budget to fix them, replace them. They weren't interested in doing so. And their board decided back in February that they would allow the city to basically take over those billboards because they understood that they were <clears throat> having issues with sex. The marquees were falling apart, the letters were on there, and they realized, and as we had received a lot of complaints from people saying that these signs need to be updated because the community was growing up and the signs looked old and, and outdated and wasn't a good reflection. Um, so going back to the new branding, um, I say new, it was approved in 2011 by whom we hired what was uh, North Star Destination Services. Um, and I can go into some of those details, but it was eight years ago approved the Live Up branding. Uh, the council community, there were hundreds of online survey responses, public workshops, 
logos are banning today as a result of that study. Um, in addition to that, in 2011, it was also presented what they call a brand print implementation plan. Uh, with the top 10 priorities, number seven being revamp low-hanging signage, which included entryway signage along the freeway. Um, so these were things that have been on the priority list for quite a while, and like we would with any piece of marketing, we use the approved branding for the city of Tashby, and um, that's why we kept it very simple. And it did definitely, in marketing, you're not gonna make everybody happy, happy, but it was consistent with everything else we were doing. Um, and so that's where that kind of came about. And like I said, we recently had the opportunity with um, did the chamber to um, to take a look at those and, and actually change them, and so that's what that's what went down. So great, that's a great explanation, and I hope that uh, satisfies the folks that uh, that showed concern. Thank you, and that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Just as an aside, I had someone call me today who's lived in Hatchby for seventy-seven years, and said the sign's gone. Okay, I mean. There, there's just two really extreme sides to this, you know. He's a pioneer as far as I'm concerned. He's like, whatever. So um, I would, I was going to mention the parade, and Mrs. Polkencourt did that. We'd love to invite you all out. And if it's raining or snowing or hailing or whatever, and you don't want to come to the parade, come to the tree lighting because um, it, it's really a fun time. And it always makes me think when, when we're getting ready to throw the switch, of just a, a small, old, I don't want to say coin, that's kind of corny, but it is. The whole area out there is full of people just waiting for um, Santa to throw that switch. And they cheer and they sing, and it's just an awesome thing. It really is. Um, and I would also, this may not be popular, but I want to thank Walmart because I didn't go anywhere all weekend because a few years back I fell on a sidewalk in front of my church and broke my elbow. So I don't like ice and I'm not, I didn't go anywhere because the parking lots were so bad. My daughter took me to Save Mart on Saturday. We parked as close as we could get and, you know, got in and got back out. And, but I went to Walmart and there's big piles of snow in all the corners because they clean their whole parking lot. I don't know whose idea it was at that standard procedure. I have no idea, but their parking lot was no ice, no snow, nothing. And I just think that's a cool thing. And if anybody knows teenagers that clean sidewalks, let me know. <laughs> and I would also want to thank, as well as Greg, our public works department, because our arteries were all plowed, clean, safe, and I just thought it was wonderful because I was sitting at home by the fireplace and they were out running snow plows and doing a great job. So we really appreciate that. All right, and if nothing else, we are going to go into closed session. If there's any votes taken, the city attorney will come into this room and announce the outcome. Thank you.